Did I ever tell you about that time that MLM guy came up to me and tried to get me to join the multi-level marketing company? No, but yeah, that same thing happened to me, but yeah, go ahead. Oh my God, dude. Freaking weird. He comes up to me. He's like, hey, hey, I got this great, wonderful opportunity for you. And he starts talking to me and I'm like, I don't want the fuck. I got to go. <laughs> you know, I'm like, I'm like that, that vibe, you know? And he's like, here. And, and he, he hands me like the pamphlet and tells me to follow this thing, the email. I, I follow through on the link and I watch the video. The video comes up and it's just like Nikola Motors. <laughs> it comes up. It's like, we are the best company in the world. We are doing the greatest things in the world. I'm like, anybody who says things like that is not doing that. <laughs> right. What's that place called? It's, I, I know exactly what you're talking about because they did the same thing to me. But this uh, place was a, um, a solar uh, multi-level yeah. marketing company gotcha and uh yeah so i saw that guy again right he acted like i didn't exist and he acted like he was so weird at, like he was so weird and it made me it he reminded me of the other day when i saw this oh these uh people eat in this outdoor restaurant setting right and mm-hmm. i saw this person like totally talking to this waiter and i it gave me these bad vibes like when i worked in a restaurant and waited tables Mm-hmm. Uh, for culinary and stuff it's like these people they just like treat you like a robot it's really strange like they treat you like you're the only employee have you ever had this like experience where you're like helping someone at walmart find this something and the person comes up to you like hey you stop helping that person come help me and you're yeah. like i'm oh, yeah. helping someone like it's really strange and bizarre it's like this person is just treating you like a robot <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that's how the vibe I got was like, yeah. you do realize like you're trying to scam me and you're just trying to waste my time. It's like I got things to do. I've got to work. <laughs> I'm gonna make money. Like you know what I mean? Like it's really, really bizarre. It's like they there's like no empathy whatsoever. Yeah, and I was, and it was very weird. Aware of that feeling, that scam feeling. It's like, it's like almost like a sociopath, like <laughs> American Psycho. Like it's crazy yeah. like, that vibe you get. And then I. I always tell myself, though, it's like these people that do that, though, they're just wired completely different. Mm -hmm. Like you can literally say thanks to that person after you get done serving them. Oh, you don't need to say thanks to me. Thank you will not make me tip you more. Your service will make (laughs) me tip. It's like, I'm just saying thank you. Like what the like Jesus Christ. This person is so freaking weird. It's like (laughs) you're paying me. It's this it's this. You know what it is? When someone is paying you or trying to get something out of you, it's like you're just their little bitch. It's like what? Yeah. Oh, I'm yeah. I'm paying you to wait on me, so you're gonna sit right there and watch me eat. And as soon as my water gets down to ninety percent, you're gonna refill it. Like <laughs> what? No, this is not how this works. This is, <laughs> I come back and check on you because I got other tables I'm waiting yeah. on. That's what me and Eric so we were weird. at Walmart. We had that saying like people come in here with this sense of uh, entitlement. As soon yeah. as they walk in the door, they're like. Oh, and Walmart did that to people though. They're hundred percent satisfaction guaranteed. So they come into the store thinking like, I need to be a hundred percent satisfied because I am a customer. And you're like, wait a second. You're kind of taking advantage of that whole hundred percent thing, you know, by things they were trying to do and get away with. And so we wouldn't put up with it. We'd be like, we'd push back like big time. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. I don't know what it is. It's about. like when they, when they have money and they're spending it on something, they just think yeah. everyone's like a like a their little bitch slash robot. It's like, no, this right. is not how this works. I can just punch you right in the fucking face <laughs> at any point in time. You do realize that I have free yeah. will. You do the real. It's like that's what people I, used to push it with us, and we would push back, and they'd be like, "What? How dare you?" I'm like, "Would you?" We would say like, "Would you talk to someone like this out on the street?" Because you would get your ass kicked. And I'm <laughs> almost about to do that right now. I don't give a damn that I'm here working. Oh, you know, screw you, man. <laughs> Yeah, there's a saying, treat people like you want to be treated. Like, yes, don't, very don't do that to people. Yeah, man. <laughs> so many instances like that. Me and Eric could just, we could go off about it. <laughs> we almost got in a fight so many times at Walmart. Well, the tables can turn, too. Like, you know, this person could be treating you like that. And one day, you get like a PhD and you're their boss all of a sudden. Yeah. yeah <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I remember you. Yeah, you're fired. <laughs> yeah, man. I I can honestly say I've never... I've I've gone out to eat so many times and I've never treated a waiter or waitress like anything but respectful, you know. 
unless they're just terrible, you know, if they're just like ignoring me and like uh, the one thing I really just say, like, just keep the water or, or the drink refilled. That's the only thing. That's the only thing I'm like, just, you know, that's all I ask. Just make sure if I'm getting low, just a little tap off, you know, that's it. That's cool. Just a little, the little tap. Just a little tap. Little tap. Just a little tap. <laughs> Let's get a little low. Speaking of like weird, really weird. Yep. Yep. Did you watch the their Neuralink uh, demonstration? I did. Did you like, notice <laughs> the first thing I noticed was the neuro like scientist guys? Their eyes were crazy all yeah. over the place. I was like, these guys yeah. are like <laughs> super smart, and they're like, <laughs> their eyes are just like darting back and forth while they're thinking. I'm like, yep. What people don't realize is that when you're on camera, eye movement is exaggerated like crazy, especially when the camera's on clo- close up on you. Like yeah. a simple. I mean, great actors know this, but a simple eye movement means a lot in acting. So yeah. when you got this real dude on camera who spends, you know, 50 hours a week working on the brain and programming and stuff, he's not going to be aware of that. So his eyes are all over the place. <laughs> I was like, whoa, calm down with the eyes, man. <laughs> You're freaking me out here. Yeah, it makes you think, like, do you have do you have one of the implants in you? Is it malfunctioning? <laughs> like, well, come on, man. That's not he's thinking, sale. like, 10 times faster than the average person. <laughs> well, I looked at Elon when that camera panned over to him and he was just looking straight ahead, like a yeah. good stare. Right. And yep. I was thinking hmm, maybe cause he's been on camera so much. He knows how weird it looks. Yeah. Your eyes are all over the place. You know, it reminded me of that scene in the Godfather when Al Pacino is thinking about shooting the guy across the table and he's like mm-hmm. contemplating it and his eyes are darting all over the place. And then he stands up and shoots the dude right in the head. Yep. <laughs> that was but when that's uh, understandable, you know, it's like, okay, yeah, I get that. You know, that's believable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's just, it's really weird. You see it like in a company setting, you see a guy just right. chilling. Yeah. I think too, maybe because he was wearing a mask, I can only see their eyes, you know? Yeah, that's definitely something <laughs> like that's all you can focus on, you know? <laughs> oh, man. But yeah, I was, was I was a... very aware though. I was watching the demo and I was thinking all these different, I was very aware of my own thinking. I was very aware of like all these thoughts rushing through my brain. Like, yeah. What is this? Like, what is, I was like, well, I didn't know I anything looking. about it until you mentioned it. And I was like, Neuralink, is that? Oh, I, I got you. Neuralink. To be honest, I had no expectations. I didn't know exactly what he was going to yeah, to reveal. I I just, I didn't know if it was going to be real small and crappy or, um, you know, just a little whatever, you know. But I was actually quite impressed. I was like, oh, okay. So he's essentially got this suite of sensors and these high-tech chip and this really really tiny thing that fits seamlessly in your skull for yeah. our audience out there Neuralink is essentially putting in a computer chip in your head and it uses these incredibly small uh, like microfibers that are like way uh, smaller than a hair and they go mm-hmm. in between the blood vessels of your brain tissue so they don't you don't you know you don't bleed or anything and they put those in and that connects to your synapses and your brain. So this is the thing that's really hard to get across to people, but you experience reality through your brain. You don't actually experience reality as it is. This is something very hard to understand. Like you don't see the world like everyone else does. And it's kind of the best explanation I ever heard was the mind is like a filter and you see that, everything through that filter it's sort of like that saying like if your brain was in a vat you wouldn't know the difference and this is what we're going to talk about today we're going to talk about the matrix Mm -hmm. and the matrix talks about this is like Neuralink is based on the idea that everything you experience is just electrical signals to the brain so like when you touch something that's just your brain telling you you're touching it when you smell something that's just your brain you know you're the nose sending the the olfactory signals through your <laughs> nervous system to your brain. So, like, the idea that we're all experiencing the same exact reality, the same, it's just false. And, mm-hmm. and you have to think of it sort of like from another animal's perspective. Like, think about a fish, you know, what a fish experiences in life. To, to a fish, the ocean is all it knows. You know what I mean? Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> there is no outside world and buildings and cars and planes. Yeah. Like, to the fish, it's just 
water. <laughs> right. Just swimming and swimming more and more swimming. <laughs> and Freaking and busting water. nuts on eggs. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta fertilize Hell those yeah. eggs. <laughs> it's gotta suck. <laughs> I was thinking too, like did you see the did you see the pigs part? Yeah. Yep. So did you notice <laughs> did you notice how Elon was constantly reiterating they're happy they're healthy and i was yeah. thinking pete yeah, is, yeah. Pete, pete is coming for you <laughs> Elon. Yeah, <he> did. <laughs> you I can't put a computer that. chip in a pig's head you know i was thinking like here they come <laughs> well i actually had that thought too because I'm, I'm a big time like i'm not like PETA level but i'm like you know i'm all about like i don't like animal testing and all that stuff but to hear him say that i was like oh okay well they're okay they do look happy Thanks, Elon. <laughs> he was reassuring the Adam audience. Yeah, he did. He did. <laughs> like, well, I guess if they're going to test them, at least they're happy. <laughs> happy I was thinking. Pigs. I was thinking. Actually, he was really quite right, though. Like, the pig is the best test subject. Like, the anatomy, yep. and like, of the pig is so similar to the per- uh, to a person, and they're so rough. Like, scary. if you put this thing in a person's head, they're not going to be taking it easy all the time. They're going to be surfing. Yeah. They're going to be skydiving. You know, they're going to be walking and running and doing all kinds of stuff. You don't, <laughs> you can't just be like, all right, put this thing in you. Okay, be careful all the time. Yeah, wear a helmet. <laughs> like, that's not going to work. Yeah, yeah, that's not going to work, dude. Now you got to wear a mask and a helmet everywhere you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was thinking, okay, yeah, pig is a great animal to yeah. test that on, especially because pigs are really smart, too. Like, you can yeah, get a lot from a pig. Yep. That's what people don't think about. It. Like, pigs are actually really smart animals, and they're close relation to dogs, too, which is kind of like, oh, my gosh. You know, I don't want to know about that when I'm eating mm. bacon. Why does bacon taste so good? <laughs> Ugh. Now when you're eating bacon, there'll be a computer chip in there. Ow. Ow. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? The neural link. It's all fried. You just ate porky. <laughs> <laughs> you ate his brain. <laughs> We're picking up the signals of you chewing. You chew too much. <laughs> Speedo, <laughs> open up. <laughs> yeah. you, you don't chew your food enough. You need to chew a little longer before you swallow. <laughs> oh, God. But that uh, that Neuralink man, that's I was doing some little bit of research on it, and I was just thinking like, dude, this is this is some high tech stuff. I mean the the presentation is pretty low key, you know. I mean it's like okay, besides what he said about yeah, you could take all your memories and have them implanted into another body or a robot. <laughs> I kind of was like, he oh, makes wait, it sound what? so nonchalant. Yeah, right. And then I was like, wait, that's that's a little that's a little weird. He's like, yeah, this is like a Black Mirror episode. <laughs> <laughs> he admits like, it too. He's like, it was like. Yeah. And then they went back to the pig. Hey, the pig, look, it's little nostrils. It's making the noises. And, uh, well, I was thinking about my my dog. We had this really mean dog. His name was Smokey. Uh huh. And he had such a temper problem, but he also got seizures really bad. And I'll tell you right now, man. When he said on there, you can like just turn off seizures essentially. Like you could just be like, "Oh, you're having a seizure," the chip will, you know, kick in and you know uh, help alleviate that problem. Yeah. And I was thinking that if you've ever seen someone have a seizure, or if you've ever seen an animal have have a seizure, it is absolutely heartbreaking because there's nothing you can really do. Like, yeah, you just have to. Their tongue doesn't go back there down their throat. Yeah, it's. I remember watching Smokey. He would get these seizures every once in a while, and it was just like so painful to watch yeah. it's like I, I don't know how to really explain it but um yeah it's really sad it um, is man especially when they're coming out of it too they're because they're just like because oh they're God. confused and they're like yeah, oh, they're cool. like yeah. disoriented and mm-hmm. oh, what the hell happened my little brother uh josh had uh was diagnosed with diabetes when he was about eight um uh, had to go to the emergency room in icu he was he had about 800 uh blood sugar count Almost went to a coma. But uh, so anyway, he was in the hospital for about a week, about a week and a half, almost two weeks. And the day he got out of the hospital, just, you know, it was traumatic, you know, being in the hospital and the ICU and all that. So the day he got out, we went to, uh, he was like, I really want, I really, I want some Denny's. I want some pancakes. And so we're like, okay, we'll go to Denny's. You know, we just got out of the hospital and we're sitting down getting ready to eat. And the waitress, one of the waitresses is walking by and falls down 
right in front of our table, full on seizure. And we're just like, what the, I mean, I'm like, wow, "Wow, this just happened. And it's just so, you know, it's just weird that we had just left the hospital with all the, you know, trauma and all that. The first thing, first place we go to is this, this Denny's and the waitress has a seizure in front of us and she was fine. Like she was, she came through and everything, but I was just like, whoa, what the hell? (laughs) I think my friend had one. We were, um, it's really hard to recall because we were smoking pot <laughs> and drinking. So it's like, uh, did that really happen? And I remember Aaron like, yeah, that happened, dude. And I was like, oh, oh damn. Uh, I won't say who had the seizure, but it was, yeah, it was really weird because it was very short lived. But I was like, it was just, you know, having a good time smoking. And then all of a sudden it's like, whoa, what's happening? This person is, uh, what's going on? Because when you're like 16 and that's happening, you're like, you've never yeah. seen it before in person. You're like, what the hell is this? <laughs> Yeah, I was thinking that's going to be awesome, like oh, being dude. able to get around that problem. And also like things like dementia, yeah. like you can just have perfect recall. And I was thinking, how many guys are going to want to have perfect recall every time they had sex? <laughs> <laughs> can I save all these memories? <laughs> like it's like you doing doggy or something like, oh, yeah, I like that one. Let me save that memory. <laughs> Wait, let me look at the girl. Oh, no, that wasn't a good one. No, he oh, ran. forget that one. Forget that one. Delete, delete, delete. They're going to be like pulling the memory over into the trash can bin <laughs> on the computer. And then someone else is going to see it and they're going to be like, whoa, you hit that. Jeez, dude. Oh, That's Amanda. So oh. <laughs> I was Man, thinking too. I was, up. <laughs> I was thinking, I was talking to my, my mom about it because uh, I was telling her about it. I just want to see like, I like to see what older people think about it and she immediately went to like all these negative things, but these are things I was thinking about too. Like all these thoughts rushing in through my brain. I was like, what happens if some particularly horrible communist country gets a hold of that though? And I was like, yeah. that's terrifying. Like if, you know, you, you have brainwashing as a problem now, imagine, you know, you just plop that thing in. All right. Now you're, now you're a robot essentially. And I can control you with this, programming like yeah. that's terrifying like get, that getting in the wrong hands Whatever. yeah yeah like north korea and i was yeah. thinking though every technology is like that you know as soon as the cat's out of the bag you can't put the cat back in the bag like yeah. nuclear weapons as soon as you created a nuclear bomb the cat was out of the bag everyone yeah. knew how to make one well not everyone but you know what i'm saying yeah eventually the soviets got in hold of it and everyone else did um everyone just keeps I, in their bunkers <laughs> we could yeah yeah we won't it, it just it just made me realize this is this will definitely be once the cat's out of the bag the cat's out of the bag just not putting the cat back yeah. in and uh i was thinking i think though the pros greatly outweigh the cons and i think elon probably came to the same conclusion with yeah. much more in-depth thinking than me because <laughs> i just thought about it for like 20 minutes you know but i was like elon's probably spent a lot of time thinking about this and he probably he probably came to the conclusion that I came to was that it's going to be inevitable that we're going to have to merge with the machine in some shape or form because we're kind of already cyborgs, like he said. You know, you're on your phone constantly looking down, texting and yeah. emailing, and it just makes sense to increase the rate of uh, data transfer and the interface uh, transfer of information, and your fingers are just too slow. And I had this problem all the time, like, my phone's getting blown up and I just, I don't, I have the thought, but I just don't have time to actually like sit there and text it out, you know? And yeah, especially when you're on the go or you're driving, it, it would be so awesome if you can just look at your phone and yep. send a text with a thought like that'd be amazing. Or like look over at your alarm clock and turn it off with just your brain. Like that'd yep. be insane. The implications, I mean, it opens up so many doors. I was listening to a podcast uh, about it and they were saying something like, this is just all speculation, but they were talking about, you know, talking about the sleep thing and the alarm that you wouldn't even need the alarm. Like you could tell your body or your brain to say, okay, I need eight hours of sleep. I'm going to start at 1030. And so at 1030, your, your body just goes to sleep mode, basically like your phone, you know, sleep mode. And then exactly eight hours, you're like, whoop, and I'm awake. Okay. So people that have like sleep apnea and uh, sleep disorders, they can get like a full nights of sleep. And so they're like even more productive at work and whatever they're doing during the day because they're actually getting that full night of like deep, deep sleep that so many people crave. 
a lot of people don't actually get like my wife Renee, she doesn't get, uh, she has sleep apnea. So that would really help her benefit her. Not that she wants to do it, but at the same time. Also too, like when you get up, you don't have to take drugs anymore. You yeah, can just correct. be like, boop, boop, program, uh, caffeine, you know, you can have like programs that resemble real life things like yeah. morphine or heroin or, you know, like, <laughs> oh, you're experiencing a, a crap ton of pain. Let's turn off that pain because it's not yeah. helping you. You yeah. know, things like that. That's, it opens that kind of door. It's like, you can kind of get around like drug abuse, alcohol abuse. Yeah. You can get around those things. Yep. That's one thing they talked about too was the uh the mental like the sex offenders and uh you know people that have been charged with crimes with men- mental illness and they can be like like at some point later down the line like what if the court orders like okay it's the sex offender that's had like multiple charges okay we're going to implant this thing in your brain it's going to take those sensations away from you you're not going to have any kind of desire to have sex ever again damn just like that it's like castration, but in your brain. <laughs> that, sound, that reminds me of that movie, um, uh, Clockwork Orange. Have you seen that movie? I have. Stanley Kubrick? I don't know. Yeah, but I know what you're talking about. I've seen it a million times. You know where that, that, that iconic scene where they're holding his eyes open? Yep. Oh, yeah. They're, they're putting the, uh, the water drop or the eye drops yep. in his eyes. First thing I thought, they said Clockwork Orange. <laughs> and it, it's just like that. They, they train him neurally to not want sex. Yeah. But then it, then it has that whole you know, dilemma of like, he still wants it. He just has these like urges to puke when he goes for it. You know what I mean? When he goes to like rape a woman or punch a man to commit violence, he, uh, for our listeners out there in the movie, our main character is a rapist. He's, he's a violent, he's, he's crazy, pretty, pretty much crazy. Yeah. And he's very violent. He's a total, just total psychopath. Essentially. He murders a chick. Anyways, but he's charming at the same time. He's got like this funny, charming personality to him, like British uh, personality. And uh, yeah, so he's like constantly getting into these situations where his brain's like, uh, like he can't actually go through with the violent act. So he ends up getting beat up and stuff. <laughs> like, <laughs> like these dudes that meet him in an alley where he beat up in the past, they beat him up and there's nothing he can do because his brain is not letting him fight back. Yeah. It's kind of it's, like, that's what it, that's what it makes me think of. Yeah, me, but it does raise that question of like, is it ethical to force that on someone? I think this type of uh, technology, though, if it's somewhat what I'm thinking and what I'm hearing, is that it wouldn't it wouldn't like punish the person at all. It just wouldn't be there. Like that desire would be gone. You know, they would before maybe they would look at like underage girls and be like, you know, aroused or whatever, and then that. Oh, so you're saying, you're saying, you're saying it's like the fish. It's like the fish in the water. They'd have no awareness at all. They don't even have an awareness that it's gone. There's nothing. Yeah. They look at that and say, oh, Hmm. I don't want that at all. There's no sexual drive. That's kind of what I'm thinking is like, it just takes it. Well, to be, to be fair in the movie, it's not a chip in his head. It's just a brainwashing thing they put him through. Right. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. This technology is like, that's what I'm seeing is like, at some point it'll get to that level where they insert it in a different part of their brain, wherever that desire is coming from. And then that just takes it away. But they, the only problem is that they have to keep recharging it. So <laughs> also it opens the door up of just understanding the brain more. Cause right. then you can just, right. you can get to the point where you can figure out how to get around those problems in the first place. Like, uh, it's sort of like medicine, you know, you, once you have an understanding of medicine, uh, and surgery and stuff like that, and you know, microbes, you can then prevent illness before it even happens. You can just be like, all right, wash your hands. <laughs> you yeah. know, yeah. Remember to wash your hands and cook your food. Yep. That avoids so oh, many problems right there. Just that I'm knowledge. Crazy. Right. Yeah. So eventually they could just be like, all right, this is what causes. We found out what exactly causes perversion in certain areas. Yeah. And we can just yeah. avoid it completely. Just take it away. So we were going to talk about the Matrix today. Yeah. And the Neuralink, to me, it's the first thing I thought about. Like, it opens that door for incredible VR, like a vir- incredible virtual reality world. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. You're, not, you're not depending on, like, headphones and a thing in front of your eyes. And, you're, and then you got to walk on a treadmill. And it's like, you could just go straight to the brain. Like, just like in the Matrix, that cord <laughs> yeah. right to the back of the neck. You know, you could just connect. 
directly with your mind. It's like a less invasive form of that. Like it's not the big giant needle in your neck, but it's still big it's penis right, in your neck. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's so phallic. Oh, the, th- the thing he pulls out of his mouth, you're like, whoa, God damn, that had to hurt. Oh God. It's like a, a ventilator <laughs> thing. Yeah. It goes all the way down. Whoo. Jesus. It's so oh. creepy, man. The whole scene where they're showing like the baby being born and, you know, linked up to all the cables. It's just so eerie and creepy, but you're like, yeah, is that real? That could be real though. Like right. you experience yeah. everything through your mind. So you don't know, like, how would you know if you're all, living in a simulation? We're all Duracells or are we energizers? I don't know. Your choice. <laughs> have you ever, uh, before we get really into ma- the matrix, have you ever seen that episode of Rick and Morty uh, where he goes into like this video game place and he goes to the VR thing? Have you seen that? I haven't. I haven't watched that show a lot. I, I need to watch it more. I hear it's really. Anyways, good. for our audience out there, he, uh, I think it's Morty sits down. He puts on like the VR and lives like a 90 year life on the VR world. And then when he takes the helmet off, he forgot who he was. <laughs> he like lived 90 years in the virtual reality sped up. Oh damn. <laughs> he lived like a great life and had a family. It was like really funny. And I was thinking, what if life was like that? Like when you, yeah. when you die, you just wake up. <gasps> oh, 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 that was a great game. <laughs> yeah, <I know> what? <laughs> You're like, We're all these like spiritual beings just floating around. Just looking for have fun on a VR world. Was that was that game pretty good? I want to try that one. Yeah, I was that poor. Was I was born in a hard country. <laughs> I think I want to be a wealthy person next time. Where's that one? <laughs> yeah, you don't want to do that. It's so boring. Yeah. And you sit down and put on some VR uh, goggles and you're like a cow. You're like, no, no. <laughs> this sucks. <laughs> I don't want to be a cow. <laughs> or a chicken. Are you, are you, you decide to become an insect and you live for like... Ooh. 12 minutes. You get stepped on. <laughs> I'm dead. Wee, I'm flying. I'm dead. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a butcher fray. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the Matrix is like a, a hodgepodge, really. It really is. It's like a hodgepodge of body horror, virtual worlds, uh, religious themes. I mean, it's so many things in the Matrix. Yeah. It's chuck full. Every scene means something. Like, I, I was watching a breakdown of the, the film in the beginning neo goes through a series of waking up if you if you really pay attention every scene is waking up the to yeah. the alarm clock but eh, eh, and he wakes up and he's uh he's uh the first time he wakes up he's at the computer when his morpheus talking to him and then the second time, and then second time he wakes up and he's late to work then he wakes up again after he gets bugged it's like it's like yeah. these levels of dreams and i was thinking like it's such a well-made movie. <laughs> like yeah. it's every scene is really well-made and you do feel like you're going down the rabbit hole with him. Yep. And I was thinking the, the reason we brought it up is in the matrix Morpheus really goes over how, how would you know the difference between the real world and the matrix if you were born in it, if you were born in it and you're just, you're just experiencing yeah. everything through your mind and all these electrical signals to the brain. When you eat the steak, it tells you it's juicy, it's tasty, it's delicious. You know, like yeah. <laughs> it raises all these questions. Now, and I think before the matrix, the simulation theory probably was just relegated to really, really nerdy guys. The Wachowskis, I think they took all these really, really nerdy things and they made it accessible to like an average person. Got a gun, bullets, of course. You know that's gonna help. Bef- yeah, before, before the Matrix, you had Johnny McCormick. Have you seen that movie? Oh my God, that sounds really familiar. Why am I drawing? It's it's pretty much the Matrix point five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's got it's got Keanu Reeves in it. And he's like, I gotta get a kilobyte of information to my brain. Yeah. He plugs it into his head, and it's like, it's really with a cartoon. Very, no, no, it's a movie. Oh. Keanu Reeves is in it. Okay, I'm thinking of Brad. And uh, it's very cheesy. It's very ni- 1995. It's so dated. It's it's the CG is real cheesy in it, but it's like it was like a demo. <laughs> it was like Keanu Reeves' demo before for the matrix like you know he okay. did that movie and it was preparing him for the matrix because it kind of goes over the same things like you know connecting to the internet with your brain and blah blah blah, blah. and it's like 
And I couldn't help but think the Wachowskis must have saw that movie because it was 95 when it came out. Yeah. They must have saw that and went, that's our guy. <laughs> they must have seen Keanu. Whoa, I'm in like another world, plugged in. That's our guy. That's stripper <laughs> writing. Put him in our movie. <laughs> but, you know, like they must have seen that, you know, sitting on their couch while they're writing The Matrix. And they yeah. said, oh, Keanu is perfect. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but the thing about The Matrix, I think the reason it was so accessible, because there's another movie called Dark City, and it goes over the same thing. Uh-huh. But it's much more of like a Tim Burton, Nine Inch Nails-esque world. And it's less about like guns and, and leather jackets. So I think it, it, it has a lot less action in it. And I, it's more leaning into that kind of like, Oh, David Lynch yeah. kind of style, you know, it's like really surreal and weird. Oh, yeah, and it's got like these goons with these like white alien faces and these like hoods and the. There's a lot of similarities between it and the Matrix. Let me send you a photo real quick. Oh, I've got it pulled up right now. Dark City. Yeah, it's. One. To our listeners out there, I've seen it nowhere near as much as the Matrix, but when I did watch it, I really liked it. Yeah, I, I highly recommend it. It's, it's a really yeah, good movie. I, I've seen it. I, it. I feel like I have, but it's been so long. I wouldn't yeah. be surprised if the Wachowskis watched this while they were making The Matrix and it influenced yeah, dark, a little bit. Trench coaches too. Or dark, long trench coats. Trench coaches. <laughs> trench coaches. <laughs> it's got all the... But you see the similarities though in like the design yeah. and oh, like yeah. the, yeah. the yeah. aesthetic. Looking at it with all the white face guys with the the trench coats on. Yeah, definitely. To be fair, though, The Matrix, if it was a song, it'd be a Nine Inch Nails song. I mean, it, yeah. I mean, let, let's be real. I mean, it's definitely like if Trent Reznor made a movie. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's hilarious. I just realized I'm going to send it to you. I just realized that the movie's called Johnny Mnemonic. Men- 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 Johnny Mnemonic, Johnny not Mnemonic. Mnemonic. I don't know what the heck. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, was, I don't know why I said that. Matrix 0.5, like demo for Keanu. <laughs> Check it out. It's so 1995. The future is the internet. Johnny, oh, yeah. <laughs> I remember that one, dude. That's been so long. Yeah. Uh, it's yeah. got the actress. Johnny I think it's got Mnemonic. the actress from. Um, <laughs> I can't remember her name. She's a redhead, and she's and she. I think yeah. she's from the movie uh, Starship Troopers. And it's got Dolph Lundgren. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's got. Uh, I think that man. was his last movie before, um, for a long time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Dina Mayer or Meyer is her name. <laughs> oh my gosh, she's beautiful, dude. Yeah, Anyways, buddy. She plays the love interest of uh, uh, Johnny Rico. Johnny Rico. Yes. Starship Troopers. Yep. Mm-hmm. Oh 1996 or 1997? Yep. Yeah, she's uh, the love interest. You know the one scene that it comes back to me every time I think about Starship Troopers is the scene where they're in the locker room and the girls are just undressing with the guys and they're just like, <laughs> yes, we're going to go out and fight these bugs. And I'm like, whoa, titties. <laughs> How do you focus <laughs> on killing giant insects when their boobs right in front of you? Well, it's just like you know, in the Africa and those those communities, they don't wear clothes. And yeah, so like, yeah, yeah. Eventually, you just get you just get used to it. Well, yeah, but those are nice titties, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, babe, but your movies don't look like that. Yeah. Whoa. Oh my god. You know, it makes me it makes me think of those nudist. Yes. The nudists are never like yes. the hot people you no. want to see. It's always the people you don't want to see. You're yeah. like, oh, the nudist oh, colonies. It sounds great, but then when you, if you actually were to go to one, you'd be like, oh yeah, these people should not be getting nude. <laughs> <laughs> I saw some video of this nudist colony. Of course, it was blurred out, and it was like reality TV. And the woman, there was this woman there. She was the youngest woman there, and there wasn't that many women. Period. And she looks so uncomfortable on that nudist beach, <laughs> yeah. just sitting there, and all the men are sitting around or looking at her. And like, she looks so uncomfortable. Like, I want to put some clothes on now. Like, I'm cold. <laughs> oh, never mind this baby. It's got a mind of its own. Sorry, it's not you. I promise. <laughs> or maybe it is. There's a reason. There's a reason why we have clothes. <laughs> yeah. Right. You always see that guy working out or running, like, and he's like so adamant about taking his shirt off and showing everybody. Oh yeah. But sometimes you get that guy and he's not in good shape. 
It's like, I don't want to, I, yeah. I don't care to see you run all flabby. <laughs> I don't care. There was a guy that used to work out at the gym I used to go to and he, you know, like he wore the like, uh, biker short things and dude, you could not look like, I didn't want to look at his, his package, but I'm like, <laughs> dude, you, you got to wear regular shorts, man. <laughs> I'm like, that's not cool. <laughs> it's like that. Uh, it's like that blow up crotch thing yeah. from that uh, movie dodgeball. Yeah. <laughs> ben Stiller blows his crotch yeah. up. <laughs> Makes his crotch look big. Oh my god! It was yeah. I, oh I my mean, god. I hope that's what it was because I'm like, well, touche. But damn, I don't want to see that. I'm trying to work out. <laughs> Good for you. Good for you. I remember in gym class we had these like really thin little silky shorts. Oh yeah. And we'd be doing jumping jacks across from the girls. <laughs> and it's hard not to get an erection when you're 16, 15 and you see boobies bouncing up and down. Yeah. And our junk is bouncing up and down too. You know, it's like, oh, this is so awkward. This is so this is kind of hot and awkward at the same time. Yep. <laughs> I was like, yeah, that's 15. <laughs> Those random boners, man, you can't help that. It's like That's what, what I'm saying. Like you couldn't help it. Oh, yeah, like, don't just <laughs> flopping up and down. And you can you had to like you have to like take your thing and and put it up <laughs> yeah, yeah. and then put it under put it your, your shirt over it. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like you gotta like m- like a lever and you gotta pull it up and leave it up. Because your boner uh, is too obvious. Once again, that makes me think of a South Park episode that the Jimmy. <laughs> when he mm-hmm. hears the bell or whatever. <laughs> uh, Ding. Oh no. <laughs> You know when you always got them is when you were sitting down and yeah. like real relaxed yeah. in the yeah. class. Yeah. Would, then the teacher would be like, Trevor, come th- to the front and, and write no. the, the math equation. I'm like, oh, no. Oh, and like you get up all awkward and walking funny, like trying to cover your boner. Or you put your hand in your pocket. trying to. Oh, it's my hand. It's, it's not my boner. It's my hand. It's my third leg. It's really small. I mean, big. I mean, damn it. Do you think when Cypher... And the Matrix was like talking to a hot chick at the restaurant or saw a hot chick. He had like a big boner yeah. when he was on the Matrix yep. chair and like, Trinity, what's going on? <laughs> He's got a boner. <laughs> <laughs> He's like in the Matrix, smiling. He always shows them smiling and stuff, yeah, like, yeah. like showing facial expressions while they're in the chair. And I was thinking, yeah, that's really weird. And like, Cypher's and Pornhub again. <laughs> like, He's got a boner. Just, his pants. That's what one of the guys on the podcast I was listening to, they were talking about how you could control your phone with your brain. And they're like, why is your phone always on Pornhub? I don't know. It's not me. I swear. It's got a glitch. <laughs> it's funny. Like when you see what they think the future is going to be, it's funny how dated that got so quick. The black leather you remember Ryan? Oh, yeah. Remember Ryan oh, yeah. would come into work and he had like the black yep. leather trench coat. And for our audience out there, it was Sam's Club. Like, it was like a Costco. Yeah. And he would come to work looking like he's going to shoot up the place. <laughs> like, he's going to literally drop a bag and uh, <laughs> keys and metal. You know, like, you know, just like all of a sudden, freeze. And it's like the Matrix scene in the court, you know, in the in the lobby, you know. Yeah. But he was like overweight, <laughs> like 350 pounds and greasy looking. And like, hey. The long, flowy hair. <laughs> the bald spot in the back. Yeah. He looked like like a, t- a stereotypical Magic the Gathering player yeah. with a Megadeth t-shirt on, you know. Um, yeah. It was really weird. That that was supposedly so cool, you know, in 1999, 1998, that That was like the coolest thing ever for two years. Trench coat mafia. That was the, what the Columbine thing. Yeah. Yeah. That was really cool for that really split second. And then I remember watching, I was, I remember I went back and I was so excited and ready to see the sequels. And it was like 2002, I think. And I went to the theater with my, my bros and my family. Or not family, just my friends. And I was watching it and it came on. And I was like, oh, they're they're still doing the leather? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, this is kind of not cool anymore. Like, I just remember thinking that feeling like, like oh, wow, this is kind of dated yeah. like, feeling. I don't I know what, it's crazy that two year, three year, you know, because I'm sure they shot the movie in 2001, yeah. whatever. And then released in 2002. I just remember thinking like, oh, this is this is really dated. <laughs> like the whole leather leather trench coat thing so there's like these twins <laughs> the twins with the dreads and, and the they're the guys that can move through walls yeah oh yeah and uh 
it, it's some great action sequences, but man, that white leather, it was just so corny looking. Yeah. I, I don't know how to explain it. When I saw that, I was like, ooh. Yeah, man. I don't know. I couldn't really get into I, I liked that like you said, the action sequences were good, but it just didn't have the same appeal as the the Matrix, the original one. It was just it was so enlightening. It was so like what? Like when you watched it, you're like, Oh, this is gonna be a cool action movie and then you're like, Wait, this is some deep shit. <laughs> <laughs> I think the yeah. the problem for me is that Keanu Reeves is like a placeholder for the audience in The Matrix, their first one. So you're experiencing The Matrix as if you're Keanu Reeves. Like he's he is like a placeholder for, for us. And when you get to the second one, all of a sudden it's changed. It's super, Superman yeah. is the main character. And it's like, oh, this doesn't no, work. No, he became Jesus. He is Jesus. Yeah, like slash Jesus slash super Jesus. And, yeah, and so it 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 takes it takes all the um, it takes all the oomph out of the fight sequences because like when he fights Agent Smith, it's just kind of comical because yeah. there's no like they're not hurting each other, they're not really I, I don't know. It just has this cartoony kind of feel, and it, it loses that visceralness. The whole scene at the playground that was like CG, <laughs> like there's like five thousand Agent <laughs> Smiths really running in. Yeah, it's just and the scene where he he does he takes the pole and he does the spin around thing i mean it, it just looks like it almost looks like it goes to a cartoon you know what would really what would have really worked is if agent smith had just become uh when he would go hit keanu it literally hurt keanu in the real world like it just it was like all over again you know what i mean like keanu spit yeah, up yeah. blood and everything like if they did that i think that angle because agent smith it was just breaking the matrix i think that'd have been much more interesting to see yeah. keanu get hurt and vulnerable from the get-go as soon as he come across yep. agent smith i think that i think that could have helped a lot he was the ultimate virus you know why why couldn't he do that you yeah because he doesn't really start causing pain to him in matrix revolutions the last one you could you could yeah. tell he's wearing on keanu like when they're fighting in the, in the rain but it should have yep. been like that from the get-go it should have been like oh keanu's not you know, he's got a rival now, you know, someone's just as good as him, you know, I think, yeah. uh, I don't know, something to me that would have been, that would have been kind of interesting. Like, yeah, have Agent Smith still be able to copy himself, but not so cartoony like, you know, like a hundred of them, like right. all saying the same thing. That was kind of cheesy. Um, yeah, that was, that was a little much. <laughs> I think it's one of those things that sounds better on paper. Like, oh yeah, there's going to be a bunch yeah. of them, a pile on them. And then he's going to make a, a pin, a pinball. What was that uh, sound when he rolled off him? It was like a bowling alley sound. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> it was like a cart- like a cartoon. Yeah, it was like boom. When you like, yeah, you're watching it. When you're watching it, you're like, whoa, this is so crazy. Then you watch it again, you're like, this is so not. This is crazy looking. It looks like a cartoon. <laughs> My reaction was very similar to the prequels, the Star Wars prequels. I was like, I want to like this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me too. I was the same way. I was I was just like that. And the third one, I'm just like, wow, okay. The the Matrix, it was way out there and way, you know, like you really had to get deep in your head to think about all this. The third one was like, I have no freaking idea what's going on here now. <laughs> yeah, you can't like, wait to convolute. Wait, what is he is he talking to a, a what the is that real or is that not? It got so heck? convoluted with like it, it got so yeah how far up its own butt with like determinism and choice and that's like yeah, yeah. it just got too far with the themes. I think I think it would have been really great if now this is crazy. I've heard this theory before, this film theory, but I don't believe it's true that he's he's in the matrix still. Even in the real world in Zion, he's still in the matrix. I don't think that's really what's going on because it's never really implied that's what's really happening. You know, it's one of those right. YouTubers like, oh, I got a film theory, blah, 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 blah. I'll make a YouTube video about it. I'm like, <laughs> uh, not really. I don't see that. But that would have been cool as hell, though, if you found out he was still in the Matrix within yeah. the real world. That would have been freaking cool. Because I remember thinking that when I saw the movie, when he put out his hand and he controlled the robot with his hand in the real world. Yeah. Remember when, the, the, that, when they get out of the Ebenezer and that, the robot's coming towards him and he ends up affecting oh, it? Oh, yeah. That would have happened earlier in the movie. And he found out that Zion and the whole real world was also another layer of the Matrix. That would have been really cool. Yeah, and then he would have to talk to the... It would have been really cool because then he would have to talk to like the architect 
to figure out yeah. more. And, and then the architect could have revealed, like, we wanted to let you be able to escape to think that you were, you know, getting right. like, one up on us. You know what I mean? Like, that would have been really we cool. Zion, too. <laughs> Not the whole 20 minute spiel that made no sense. That that have been, yeah. that was kind of dumb. Like, it was just. I mean, I got what it said after seeing it 10 times. I I, I, tell, yeah. I understand what he's talking about now is like there was multiple iterations of Keanu like before him. He's not the only one. Um, yeah. That's why there's all these videos have Keanu having all these different reactions. And some of them are kind of comical. It's like, fuck you. <laughs> he's <Yeah>. like yelling <laughs> at the architect. But to me, it's like it was just too goofy. Like that whole 20 minute rant. I remember the, uh, George Carlin did the parody version oh yeah yeah. <laughs> that was like the mtv yeah. music awards or whatever yep <laughs> oh my god i think will ferrell did the other one too will ferrell did the one for... yeah i don't remember which one that was but uh, yeah just freaking so dumb <laughs> but yeah that whole that whole that whole sequel thing i don't i don't know it just it's it's off it's definitely off yeah and um they're not bad they're just no, they just no. don't. They don't live up to the first one, and I think. Yeah, I think first one was revolutionary, man. Yeah, it really was. No pun intended. No, major sure. Right. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> right. Right. But no, I was thinking though, like, if I got so excited about that, me watching in the theater that re- reveal when he did that to the rope, that's what they should have went for. They should have went for. Oh, yeah. he's still in the freaking matrix, like, yep. and then he realizes he's got to figure out how to get out of that world, that layer. Sort of like Inception, like a dream within a dream. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. That would have right. been really cool. You know, then yeah. then he would have to figure out how to defeat Smith and get out of Zion. Right. Like, I don't know. And then you could have, like, another... Maybe Morpheus is created. Morpheus was part of the Matrix, too. Yeah, then you could have, like, a um, yeah. like a reveal. Morpheus is actually, like, evil or whatever. Morpheus I don't know. Is actually, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, he's over. He's part of, he's a virus too. <laughs> and he gets in a fight with him. That would have been really cool. Like him getting in a fight with Morpheus. Like, yeah. <laughs> you know, in the real world. And they're just doing all these Kung Fu moves. That would have been really cool to see yeah. that play out. But then again, would that have been just as terrible? <laughs> Probably. Probably. <laughs> I think it would have been more fun though. I think it would have been much yeah. more fun to have that instead of people worshiping Keanu in Zion. Like, I don't know. Yeah. That, that was kind of too much the whole I Jesus look at it like now when i when i think back to it i'm like okay i i love the matrix the original one that's it's one of my favorite movies and the other ones i don't really put those with the first one i'm just kind of like eh i'll watch them again you know i just 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 for to see like you know kind of catch different things that i didn't see before another once again but, it's a, another star wars analogy i can watch the original yeah. star wars and then just stop yeah, when they like right. when yep. the the medal ceremony. Not saying uh, yeah. Empire Strikes Back is terrible. Just saying I can just stop at the first one and, yeah. and not feel the need to. It's work. good. It stands alone. Yeah, it's, it stands a good, alone. it's a good standalone. Like you can just watch yep. the Matrix and then you're done. You can just turn it off yep. and don't even think about the sequels. When he flies off and you're like, "What the fuck?" It's like, <laughs> "Come on, bunch <laughs> yeah. yeah. Funny story. Another funny story. Eric used to work at a movie theater, and uh, he said he would he worked in the projection part. And he would, uh, it would be like, you know, the matinee show, the earlier show. So it would be like a lot, of, a lot of older couples and families and stuff. And whenever the Rage Against the Machine part would come on, he would crank the volume all the way. So <laughs> it would be like max volume in the theater. And they'd be like, wow, that's so loud. So it'd be like Rage. <laughs> yeah. What was that? Uh, <laughs> come on. Yeah. <laughs> Don't to die, justified. Is that the song? I don't. I don't know. I don't know. No, it's uh, wake up. It's no, it's not called wake up. It's called. You no, know, that's the part of the song is wake up. I can't remember. You no, know, you can though. use that for song? anything. You can literally end any like. You can end like a yeah. sad drama movie. Yeah, come on. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like you know you're crying at the funeral yeah yep. don't come on. <laughs> you can end anything with like you know like your uh uh you, you tell your boss off i quit yeah come on, come on. <laughs> <laughs> like you can just play that at any but and we get someone pumped oh, yeah. they wouldn't have no idea why they're pumped you just like brainwashing them <laughs> being pumped yeah I feel, yeah. yeah i feel so good Ugh. That is that is the name of the song. The title of the song is "Wake Up." Wake up! 
in my book, yep. it's the yeah, come on, come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when he when he walks out in that that shot is so cool. I, it's burned yep. into my brain when he walks out of that phone booth and he and it's in that color palette and he looks up yep. and then he just <laughs> super neo. Even yeah, in the even that, in the in the sequels, the flying is cheesy looking. Like it's all like yeah, dude. It's, it's, it's like dragging yeah. cars behind them. They're like hitting stuff, and it's all like cartoony yep. looking. I'm like oh, I don't know about that. Yep, he's flying to race. Doesn't he fly to like save Trinity or something? Or is that Superman? Am I thinking of Superman? <laughs> <laughs> I've got I you. The movies up. No, he saves. <laughs> Remember, Superman saves Lois. He has to fly. He he flies around the war- the Earth to make it go reverse <laughs> i don't know if you remember that one <laughs> it's like super bad 2 or something now there's actually a lot of it's cool stuff shit. in the uh you remember the doors when they close them they opened up to somewhere else that was really cool yes. i thought that yeah, was cool when yeah. he when he runs through the door real quick and the guy closes it with the key the key maker and yeah. then he opens yep. it and he's like in the middle of nowhere he's like crap he's gotta yep. fly <laughs> he's gotta fly to get trinity i was thinking that's cool you could do cool you could do cool stuff like that i think i think they just got to I think they got too far down the wrong direction, so yeah. to speak, you know, like what direction to take it. I think too, like, I think they are, they probably had a lot more time to make the matrix in, pre-production wise. Oh yeah. I think the, yeah. the sequels probably were uh, a little bit more rushed. Like, you got to make this thing in two yeah. years instead of, you know, uh, you got five been working on this thing for people, five years. People want it. They want the sequel. Come on. It's kind of the opposite of my argument of the prequels. Remember, I was like, the prequels need to be made faster, and yeah. and then the the major is like, you made it too fast. <laughs> yeah, like the, it's like there is like a balance. Like you, right. you want to make sure and it's that, good. Especially with the Matrix, that would have been one that like if they had taken longer, it would have been even more anticipated because the Matrix stands up. To t- it stands up like even now. It's it's one of those movies I can just watch and be like straight through. You know. Mm-hmm. so i think if they had waited even longer it would have been like even more like oh my god the sequel's finally here yes not pushed it out as quick so yeah i think too like sequels are just hard <laughs> you yeah. know what i mean like oh, yeah, man. it's so hard bringing back an actor and be like all right let's let's make another hit you know it, it's it's definitely hit and miss like there's no real pattern to the sequels that are better than the first yeah. like Mad Max uh, Fury Road. It's a freaking great movie. And it's a sequel. Uh, Mad Max. Uh, the second one is great. And I think it's better than the first one. The first one is just called Mad Max. The second one's called The Road Warrior. I think that's the the better one of the original trilogy with Mel Gibson. And most people agree The Road Warrior is the one they like the most. That whole chase scene with the, the uh, ass blaster guy. Oh no no that's the oh. third one. Uh, that the the one where they're on the semi truck and it's carrying uh sand. They they find out. It, it, I think it has sand in it or it's, it's anyways. It's supposed to be carrying gasoline or whatever. Oh uh, yeah, the tanker tr- uh, semi truck, and Mel Gibson, you know, to watch it. gets uh, yeah, he gets beat up and he gets carried by a helicopter <laughs> by an Aussie. Anyways, you never seen the second seen one? It. I haven't. No. What you never seen the Road much. Warrior yeah. with Mel Gibson? I haven't, man. No Gibson, my Lord and Savior. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you want to stab me? Come on, you know you want to beat me, right? <laughs> yeah, I'll have to check it out for sure. Yeah, I think that one's better than the first one. You said Fury Road, the the, Char- the Charlize Theron. That yeah, one's that good. one's a good one too. I think that's better than the okay. first one. <laughs> I, still, I haven't seen that one either. So, but there's no real pattern. Like, like Predator Two sucks compared to the first yeah, Predator. Yep. Um. Terminator 2, I think, is better in a lot of ways than the first one. Oh, yeah. But the first one's still the first one's still a great movie. Um, yeah. I think... They both stand alone. Like, it's one of those ones that they both can stand alone, but they're, you know, being the sequel to it, it and they took it a lot longer to bring out the sequel, so it just made it that much better. Yeah. I think it's really hard to draw, like, a correlation slash pattern. It's like, it's just tough, because, like, remakes have the same problem too like the thing the thing uh from the 80s when most people when they think of the movie the thing with uh kurt russell that's a remake yep. you know and it's great it's a great freaking movie yeah. like it's far yeah. it's far better than well i don't know if i could say far better but it's definitely 
better than the fifties one. The fifties one, it's like a guy in a junk green jumpsuit. It's an alien from outer space. Yeah. You know, it's like, and it's like thing. It's like, <laughs> it's like a shape shifter, and it takes you. Over. Like that's yeah. really creepy and crazy cool. And another great movie uh, that's a remake is Scarface. The original was like a gangster from like the thirties, or whatever. Yeah, hey, see, you got, come on, coppers, you know, yeah, come get me. That's right. And then, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, during like the whole like bootleg alcohol bootlegging era you know <laughs> during the yeah. prohibition so it was probably actually in the 20s or whatever anyways he had a tommy gun he was shooting it at cops through a window yeah, yeah see and uh but the remake is amazing like scarface the 80s version oh yeah amazing yeah man I, like i think when you do a remake that far apart too it makes it better like when it's not just like a couple of years later like do a remake do another batman Every three years. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, have you seen the new Batman trailer? The Batman? I have. It looks interesting. It looks pretty cool. I, I definitely had the thought in my brain. I was like, they're just, I was like, how many Batmans have we had now? <laughs> yeah. They're trying to make him, it seems like this one, they're trying to make him seem like more, not as hero-ish, a little more dark. I don't know. I got a, I don't That's kind of the theme I picked I up. I got like a David Fincher vibe. When he was at the crime scene, yeah. with the detective, and he was talking to him, I had that feeling like it was going to go that direction. Like it's not going to be like Christopher Nolan world big, you know what I mean? Like, right? I think. Uh, well, it. What, go ahead. The thing that made me think is that is that when he, you know, they said they did the scene like "Who are you?" kind of like the original Batman, and he said, "I'm vengeance," and I'm like, "Oh, they're going for a little darker side here." Then it cuts to a wide, and it's obviously a dude in like a. Halloween costume. Yeah. <laughs> Batman costume. It's like, eh, this is kind of cheesy. He just said, I'm Vinge. Yeah. You gotta you gotta think that's probably pretty cheesy to see that play out yeah. with your eyes on set. Like this I guy's wearing this Batman costume. Yeah. Batman costume. Because <laughs> you know, you do the close ups, it looks like epic and stuff, but then you zoom out and it's like yep. real real life eyes, you know, seeing it. It's like, ooh, this is kind of cheesy. Uh you know what? Something in my brain I realized the other day it was I was thinking about Avengers Endgame and a lot of the Marvel movies dropping the whole superhero thing like you could have a superhero movie like the skin but the movie itself is not really a superhero movie like i noticed that what that's what hollywood's been doing like especially marvel uh if you watch the joker it's essentially it's essentially like a martin scorsese film but with the skin of a superhero yep. genre of, you know pulled over it but really underneath it's like a raging bull oh or, yeah What's that movie with uh, Robert De Niro and he shoots the people and shit? I've seen it. Taxi Driver. It's essentially Taxi Driver, but with the yeah. the superhero world skin pulled over it. Yeah. And I, I realized that's what Hollywood's been doing. They just put slap Superman on something just to get your ass in the seat yep. to see the movie. They do. That's, that's, so that's true, all that's man. really happening. You're not really seeing like an origin superhero story yeah. anymore. You're just seeing a movie <laughs> repurposed, essentially repurposed, yeah. you know. They do keep getting darker and darker, it seems. Well, that's, what, I that's how I've changed my mind about it. So instead of being like cynical, like, oh, another Batman, I just look at it like, oh, this might be a, a big budget David Fincher type movie. That's how I look at yeah. it now. Like, I take the cynical superhero genre glasses and I take them off and I just look at it yeah. like, oh, they just need to get butts and seats to make up for the production budget. So they're going right. to slap Batman, you know, on the title, you know. But really what you're yeah. seeing is a movie about it's sort of like Seth Rogen talked about when making movies is like you, you trick people into getting into the theater thinking they're going to see a boner comedy. And the real story is about <laughs> love. You know what I mean? Like you're tricking yeah, people yeah. into seeing a movie about getting older, like the 40 year old virgin and, yeah, you know, and yeah. uh, dealing with relationships. It's a really good movie too. But it's, yeah. it's funny. Like he's so right. Like Judd Apatow does that. Like he tricks you into thinking like, Oh, I'm going to see just a boner comedy. And it's really, yeah. it's like this. 40, uh, this is 40. Have you seen that one? Yeah, I've seen it. It's great. And it's very good. One. And yeah, uh, very good one. it's sort of like that skin pulled over this story. Yep. And it's, that's not really what you're seeing. You're not really seeing a, right. a boner comedy story. You're just, that's just the yeah. genre to get your ass in the seat. And I, it, it made me think though, like, that's what's happening It's Hollywood is doing that. It's taking the skin. I think the issue is when you try to remake stuff beat for beat for beat, same thing with sequels. Don't do that. Like beat for beat, exact same movie. Don't do that. Cause like if I took the Batman franchise and said, Oh, I'm just going to make another, whatever, you know, 
the Dark Knight Rises again, or whatever, the Dark Knight, people would be like, this sucks. I don't want to see this again. I don't want to pay $20 yeah. to see this again. Like, I've already seen this. That's why the Joker was so good. It was so different. It wasn't anything compared to Heath Ledger's Joker. It was a way more vulnerable character, you know? Yeah, it was about mental illness. Right. And yeah. Um, yeah, it was a lot, of, a lot of different themes and stuff. You saw the beginnings. You saw the him you know, like falling, going down the rabbit hole and, and going into the dark side. And, and to be fair, and to be fair, like another positive way of looking at it too is imagine how many people would have not seen this movie and not seen Joaquin's performance if it wasn't yeah. the Joker. If it was just like right. mental asylum. If it was called something like that. No one would go see it. So with the whole property uh, franchise thing, Hollywood can get a lot of people to come out and see it. And if uh-huh. they fulfill that, you know, tell a good story, end of the bargain, then a lot of people walk away with, you know, seeing a great story. So I, I, I don't know. I th- there's a lot of cynicism around like the whole superhero genre. And I get it. I, when I see like the genre, like on Netflix, the new show, and I'm like, Oh God. But then yeah, I have yeah. to tell myself like, well, maybe, maybe it's just a skit. <laughs> it's underneath it, underneath it, it's not really a superhero thing. I watched a little bit of one that was just out recently. It takes place in New Orleans. I can't remember the name of it, but it's about this drug that they're giving people and it causes them to go into like some kind of a superhero type thing. But it's, it was weird. It was weird and creepy. And like, it's got Jamie Foxx. And I don't know if you've seen it. I can't remember the name. I just watched like one or two scenes. Oh, I've seen like, the trailer for that. It's on Netflix. Yeah, they take some kind of drug and it makes them like have superpowers. But their superpowers are like, it's just we like this one guy. The, he's he's one of the bad guys, and he injects himself, and he turns into this like this big Hulk figure creature thing. And he's like chasing them through the streets and stuff. And it's just like, whoa, what the what the hell is this? This is weird. <laughs> and he ends up like blowing up or something and dying. Okay, that's it's it's like a weird dark twist with superhero esque type ends stuff. Up blowing like, up and dying. So it's like an it's like an yeah allegory for guys who inject stuff into their biceps. Right. Yeah, kinda <laughs> like that. Yeah. Like I'm checking cement and cement into my biceps yeah. to make them bigger. <laughs> he blew up and died. Right. <laughs> what could happen to you? You want to do this? You seen yeah, that so though, right? You seen that guy who's like injecting oh, yeah. oil into yep. his biceps and they exploded? Oh yeah. Yeah. It's terrible. So that's what it is. It's just a movie about don't inject your biceps. <laughs> That's the bad part too is the guys that are doing this, the girls that like the women that they're trying to attract don't even like that look. They don't like the big, huge muscle look. It's just more of like a freak show kind of thing. Like, wow, look at that guy. He looks weird as fuck. <laughs> I think it's like the um it's the people who they kind of go overboard with surgery or tattoos. Oh yeah. It, it's, yep. you, it's like you get, it's like a uh you get such a high from the building of the body that yep. you start working out all these muscles to the point of like, it's just not natural and it doesn't match the rest of your body. Yeah. Have you seen the picture of the, the real Ken doll guy? Yeah. That's what I'm saying. It's like they, yeah. it's like a slippery slope. Yep. They have like a hundred so surgeries. surgeries. Yeah. Ridiculous. I think, he had ribs removed so he could like have his uh, uh, waist area pulled in tighter. I seen this guy uh, at the gym. He could tell he skipped leg day at every chance he got. <laughs> but he also could tell at some point in time, he said, oh, you know what? I need to start taking steroids. And I was like, ooh. Yep. Looking at him, I was like, he just looks gross. <laughs> I was like, he looks disgusting. Like, all bulging stomach, and his arms are just like way out of whack compared to the rest of his body. And his yep. neck didn't didn't fit. You know what I mean? Like, it just, his whole body was out of whack. There was no uh, proportion to his, his yeah. limbs and just like his chest and his stomach and he had like a, like a big old and he had a big old beer gut and it was like really weird looking. I was like, dude, like, Oh my God. And the way he walked, you could tell like he couldn't scratch his own back. He had to like, yeah, you could literally like put something on his back. Like, oh, what'd you do? What'd you do? He'd be like spinning around <laughs> trying to grab it. <laughs> he was working out and I was, I was listening to him. You can hear like this bomb snapping while he's lifting like 80 pound dumbbell. I'm like, Oh God. <laughs> It sounded like chicken legs breaking every time he lifted the weight. <laughs> and he's like walking around. And he's got that thing around his waist to help with the back, you know. <laughs> and he's just like, he just looks like he's perpetually stuck in that like, oh yeah, yeah, yep, bowed up mode. You know what I mean? Like they're bowed up, like they're about to get in a fight. You know, 
he had that look to him. I was like, oh man, dude, like, how do you get in your car? I got to watch this guy get in his car. He's got like a tiny little Kia. He's trying to like squeeze in. <laughs> I sent you a couple of pictures of the Ken doll guy, just by the way. That that that's that second photo, the one him with the pink suit of the Ken doll guy you sent me. He yeah. looks like a painting, like an oil painting yeah. right there. That looks so freaky. Like, <laughs> yeah, he does. T- it, it looks like an 1880s like oil painting. Like this was the the George Washington's cousin. If he when he passes away, he can go straight to Madame Tussauds and they just stick a pole up his butt. And he'll be fine. Why do they got to stick a pole up his butt? What's that got to do with anything? <laughs> Well, you know, to keep him from falling over, I guess. <laughs> I never noticed the pole up the butts of the mannequins there. Oh, well, <laughs> well he's human, actually. I guess you know he's not fully plastic. I don't think. I'm just <laughs> like trying little... to imagine, like, why, why, why am I going to stick something up his ass? What the hell? <laughs> Maybe he wants that. Maybe that was part of his request. <laughs> we'll have to edit that no, out. I'm keeping it in. That's funny. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> big pull up your ass. Uh, why? <laughs> what? Well, I'm trying to remember. I went, I went to the I went to the wax museum in Vegas, and they had the Johnny Depp one. I don't remember them having pulled up their asses. I'm like, they just kind of just stand there. Uh, I had clothes on, right? It probably went up his leg. <laughs> it might be just through his feet, you know, like through the feet, like. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not the ass. You know, it's funny though. Uh, that reminds me that you remember that movie, The Wax Museum where they would trap people in the wax. That's, yes, that's what he's going to be. He's going to be like the creepy person trapped inside. Yeah. Oh, that's a creepy movie. I got to watch that one again. That's a good one. But I, yeah, would love to, I would love to see him play poker. Like, could you imagine trying oh, to read him? Oh, he's, he's, he's got a good hand. I don't know. <laughs> he's got the ultimate poker face. His face doesn't move for anything. <laughs> Are you sad? Are you happy? Are you depressed we have no idea <laughs> your face is stuck <laughs> that reminds me keanu i love him so much i really do but have you yeah. seen uh bram stroker's dracula i think that's oh, yeah. Stoker, uh, stroker yeah stroker i don't it's stroker yep. stroke it yep. uh his so, performance in that is so bad it is bad so to our listeners out there keanu is such an under actor He's he essentially he essentially is never overacting, but when he tries, it's hilarious. When he yep. tries to like fake it, you know, it, it it just comes off as comical. There's this moment where he's in the bed with all the vampires, yeah, and yep. they're like eating a baby or something. He's like, yep. no, no. <laughs> he's like, he just so he puts in the cheesiest over performance when he sees the. You know when I saw him. that, it's it's I didn't really know that much about Keanu. I knew it, like Bill and Ted and all that, but. He's like, eh, he's a side right. actor. Yeah, he's it, the act. The the uh, the the reason I watched the movie and, and the the main role is uh, uh Gary Oldman. So good. Now Gary so, Oldman in that movie, he he can dial it up to ten and overact, yeah. but he gets away with it because I don't know what it is. Some actors they can overact and it's fine. I don't know. It looks yeah. okay on camera. I don't know why that is, but I see this all the time. Like in class when I take acting classes. I would yeah. see an actor and you could tell they were chewing the scenery, but for some reason it was just entertaining to watch. Like not in a yeah. bad way, but like a good way. Yeah. And he's just one of those guys who can do it. He can just, Dude, you know, I love his role in that one. Stones. So good. He can just totally be over the top and it's great. Yep. Um, yeah. When he's, when he's like getting behind Keanu and, and the, and the Dracula, he's like, eh, like leaning over him and then yeah. licks the blood real quick when he cuts, when, he, when Keanu gets cut. Yep. Like, yeah, that's he's just totally overacting, but it's so great. Like him yep. and that makeup, it's just so awesome. He's a great example. There's a lot of great British actors out there. Yeah, yeah. You see him in uh, what's it, uh, Bruce Willis, and he's like almost got like a, s- a southern accent. Yeah, you know, the fifth. Yeah, element. I was just talking about that. Bring me the stones. Yeah, <laughs> he's so yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Bring me the stones. <laughs> that dude's totally British, and you're like, wow, that's so good. It can't be that easy. I mean, maybe it is. I don't know. <laughs> a southern accent may be easy. There's probably. this scene in Dracula where Keanu, he runs out the window and he's got a lantern. He's like looking out the window and he sees Dracula climbing up the wall. Gary Oldman climbing up the wall. Oh, and he has no reaction at all. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I wonder what, 
I wonder what he told Keanu to do when, like, all right, now you see Dracula on the wall. Like, Keanu was just like, oh, uh, whoa. Whoa. <laughs> whoa. <laughs> yeah, there's this great part where he's, like, at the dinner table. He's like, I don't know. Well, uh, he's, like, trying to be British, and it's so freaking funny. Like, he's, like, he's got, like, the total dude bro accent going on. But he's like, hello, I'm British, dude. <laughs> it's so great. Oh, my God. <laughs> Yeah, that's a good one. I gotta watch that one. Even his hair, even his hair is like still like, bro, whoa, whoa, in that movie. You're still like Dracula and stuff, yo, dude. <laughs> but to be fair though, that was only like a year after Ted, and Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey, yeah. the sequel. So that's a sequel that. Speaking of sequels, that's a sequel that's I think is better than the first one. I know. That's, oh, the Bogus Journey. Yeah. I don't think yeah, that. I like that one more because it's more about going to hell and yeah. stuff. I think that's funnier than the time travel. Yep. But that's a very unpopular opinion when you tell people that you like the Bogus Journey over the first one. Right. <laughs> but I, I really do. I really do. I like Bogus Journey over the first one. Let's we'll see about the new one. It should be interesting. I'm oh, I just watched it, it actually. Oh, last did night. you? How was it? Yeah, it was really good. Oh, nice. Nice. Yeah, they're having a good time. You can tell. Like, yeah, check it out. They're really into it. Yep. Keanu is funny as hell. Nice. And Alex Winter, man. Just... There was this one scene. I don't want to spoil it, but they, they're like going around and going to their future selves and it was so reminiscent of when i would go to open mics they go to this open mic and they're playing like oh they're in a they're in a crappy open mic because they're seeing themselves in the future oh, okay <laughs> no i thought we would be famous by now damn it and i was thinking about all the open mics i've been to you're like sitting there and it's like two people in the crowd like uh, listening to you yeah and it's like <laughs> where did you watch how did you watch it I gotta try. Yeah, you can just run it online. Oh, okay. Anyway. okay, gotcha. I bought it. I bought it for twenty bucks. Oh, nice. I was gonna buy it. Okay. Yeah, I was Dude. like, ah, I just pay a little bit more and buy it and own it. Speaking of vampires and Alex Winter, I didn't I never realized that was him in Lost Boys. It's so crazy. Oh, that is him in Lost yeah. Boys? Yep. Uh pretty damn sure. I thought it was Keith Sutherland. Oh no, he's the, he's the... one of the other vampires. He's the one with like oh, curly. Are you freaking hair. kidding me? I'm, I'm almost I never 99% noticed that. sure. Let's see. Lost. Hang on one second. That's him. It looks like Ted. That's him. Yep. <laughs> it is him. I never yep. noticed that. I've seen the movie a bunch of times. Yeah, dude. I remember him. He had the big bullet. Uh, he was always my favorite vampire in that one. I don't know why. I just, he was just weird, but I liked him. Another great vampire movie. So it's very good. Very well, that's, different. That's a testament to his acting. He can just blend in. Like, don't worry yep. about me because that's when you're not the lead, you're, you're not yeah. trying to take heat off the lead. You know, you're just there. You know, that's yep. that's something really hard to get across to people is like, where do you fit into the story? Like, <laughs> like the cab yeah. driver is not the the not the lead in the movie. You should not be like, hey, I'm so loud and I'm so obnoxious yeah. and taking away. It's like, no, 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 <laughs> dude, you're just a cab driver. You're just a co star. Right. You're just say your line. And you pick up Jamie Foxx or whatever Tom Cruise. You like Tom yeah. Cruise is the star, not you. Like, oh, uh, I was reading this thing. I, I sent you the link to the nineteen uh, nineteen things the Matrix predicted about life in two thousand nineteen. Let's go over it. Uh, one of the things uh, we don't have to go over the, all of them because it's nineteen. But uh, <laughs> one of the things that was quite interesting to me, a couple of things, actually. This one was, it was number seven. Most of what Elon Musk thinks. It says, is Elon Musk the real life Neo? A former Tesla, a former Tesla exec says he's the one. <laughs> Watch the Matrix. Elon is Neo. Look at that. Elon, E-L-O-N, N-E-O. It's almost the same without the L. Whoa. Whoa. He, see, he, he sees these zeros and ones. Musk himself says there's only one, one in a billion chance that we aren't living in a simulation. That we may have hired scientists to break us out. Yeah. Whoa. But he also has, owns a company called Neuralink that seeks to connect human brains to computers. And this, is, this was posted in... Uh, what was it posted? 1987. Whoa, yeah. not right. <laughs> February, this was posted February 8, 2019, and they were talking about Neuralink and Elon and comparing it to the Matrix. Kind of weird. Kind of weird. Kind of has a little tie into what we're, our podcast is about. 
I was thinking, I was thinking, uh, just a quick side note. I wish I had the ability to be invisible so I could just go into those rooms and just listen, like Elon oh, talking yeah. to those guys and working. Yeah, I just right. want to, want to like get in there and just be a fly on the wall and hear and see yep. what they're working on. Like, I just, I think those conversations could be quite interesting. Like seeing, because yeah. I remember there was this one astronaut on the Joe Rogan's podcast and they were talking about Elon and him working with Elon. And I just was so fascinated, like hearing, you know, Elon Musk behind closed doors, like his thinking process and stuff. And uh, yeah. similar to, obviously it's just like his public persona. He's, there's no yeah. difference. He, he thinks like first principles and stuff and it's about, you know, mission to push sustainable energy. But I just would love to sit there and like, you know, hear all his like techno jargon and stuff. <laughs> like, all right, yeah, yeah. get this uh, get this done, and then this, and then you make sure. Make... You almost feel it when you're when he when you see him being interviewed or being, or doing his presentations. He just he has this almost like a like he's always thinking like fifteen to twenty, thirty, forty steps ahead. You know, of like everyone else. Like he's already way way ahead of everyone. You're just like, what are you, what else are you thinking about? Okay. You've already got this Neuralink, you've got SpaceX, you've got Tesla. Like what, what else, you, what else you got going on, bud? <laughs> he reminds me, he's like, he reminds me of this quote I saw, like you think about what you want far into the future and then you work your way backwards. Essentially it's just long-term thinking, but extremely long-term thinking. And then he's taken it to like the nth degree. <laughs> he's like, all right, in a hundred years. Everyone wants this type of reality. Well, what do we need to do in the present today to make that happen? You know, and he's going to be dead, you know, in a hundred years or more. So it's crazy that he thinks that way. Like, oh, I need to do all these things today to make that uh, a reality in the year 2080. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's what blows my mind. He's like, he takes that so seriously. Like we need to, yeah. we need to, uh, you know, rapidly, uh, reduce the cost of rockets and getting into space and low, uh, low earth orbit. We need to yep. uh, switch to sustainable energy because we're going to run out of oil in a hundred years or more or whatever. So he's like, he's thinking so far ahead and then acting the present to get to that future point in time. It's like yep. extreme delayed gratification. It is. And because I think, you know, yeah, he can just go on an Island and just sit and oh, yeah. do whatever, you know? Yeah. I mean, he's a billionaire. Well, I think there's a reason he said something about, like, I could have a neural link in my head right now. You'd never know. <laughs> oh, and then we can just take, we can take it out and put it in a robot or another body. Like, you know, he's thought about that. <laughs> like, oh, what if I want to be a woman next time? I'll just take my memories out and stick it in that. Have you noticed the Matrix is sort of like a trans metaphor or an allegory for being trans? It It's definitely... Now that the Wachowskis, you know, have transitioned, it's definitely revealed to me how much of a trans movie it is, really. Yeah, have they they both did, didn't they? Yeah. Lana. Lana and Lily. Yeah. yeah. They both transitioned. That's so... I'm just reading this right now. The breakdown of the gender binary. That's number four on the 19. Wow, that's I so crazy. It, um, just pulled that up. I rewatched it, and I, always, and I was, like, with my girlfriend, and we were drinking wine. And I was like, oh, let's put on the Matrix. And even when I was shit faced, I was like, this is such an allegory for the trans. And I remember saying <laughs> that to my girlfriend at the time. I was like, looked over at her. This was only like two years ago. And I, I remember watching some YouTube video about it. Like, it's a, it's an allegory for trans. I was like, yeah, whatever. And then I, I rewatched it. I was like, oh, God, this movie is an allegory for being trans. Like, it really is. Because yeah. at first, you just see it more surface level, you know, before this information about the Wachowskis came out, you know. And then now yeah. it colors it. It's sort of like, not not to, I'm not saying this is a negative thing, but sort of like when an actor does something really terrible and then you go back and rewatch the movies and you have struggled to watch it. You're like yeah. like I, I was watching, um, uh, what's that movie called? Outbreak. <laughs> I was like watching Contagion oh, yeah. and Outbreak and they're yeah. so different in terms of like the approach to a global pandemic. And yep. it's got, uh, Kevin Spacey in it. I was like, oh, Kevin Spacey's in this. Oh, and I couldn't watch it. I was like, oh, he's oh, he's distracting me. I was like, ah. Oh. I was like, I forgot he's in this. And then it has Dustin Hoffman too. I was like, oh, oh, Dustin Hoffman's been accused too. Oh. But I was like, Has he really? 
I know that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, he's been accused, but it was just minor stuff, like nothing to. Oh, okay. uh, it wasn't uh, enough. It wasn't like was Kevin Spacey. Tight. Yeah, no Kevin Spacey level stuff. Uh, <laughs> I was just like, oh, I can't watch this. But the Matrix is definitely colored by knowing like the Wachowskis now. It's like, oh, I see this now. It's like, it's like, it's almost like the movie. You know, the movie's coded in green. <laughs> All yeah, the scenes yeah. are in like yeah. the window in the Matrix. Everything's kind of green tinted. Well, now the movie's yeah. tinted, but in trans. It's like trans tinted. Right. I'm like, oh yeah, I see this now. I don't, it's not a negative thing. It's just, uh, it's really interesting to go back and rewatch something like that. That's when I was reading this. I'm like, I didn't even pick that up. But now that I'm, now that I read this and I think back to it, I'm like, yeah, that kind of does. It says trans women, trans women have claimed the matrix as an allegory for gender transition since at least 2012. So yeah. Splinter your mind. Yeah. Yeah, there's One this. The Matrix is gender binary. It's the, uh, it, it's even like in a quote or a line in the movie. It's like when he's talking about the splinter in, uh, uh, in your mind, he's like, you have this yeah. problem, yeah. but you can't quite put your finger on what the problem is. The mate, it's the yeah. Matrix. It's all around you. It's, it's, you're in it. It's all around. And I think that's like the allegory. Like, you know, you're in this world that you're either a woman or a man, and that's it. You're either this. Yeah manly burn uh bearded guy uh, and you you know stand up and take a piss a certain way drink a beer or you're yeah. a barbie doll like it, there's no in between you know these dichotomies you know but it's not it's not really how things are you know it's a spectrum reality so yeah yeah i can totally see that like <laughs> the person in that boat they can't quite put their finger on what's wrong with them and then that's right it's like oh it's because I feel like I'm not in my body. Like I look at myself and I'm like, I don't feel like this is me, but what is wrong? Mm. You know? So yeah. They even talk about the red pill and the blue pill, like the red pill. Many pointed out online that back in the nineties prescription estrogen was in fact red. Oh, now the most obvious one, it draws uh, inspiration from Plato's cave. I think that's what it's called. Yeah. It's so the allegory of the cave by Plato, it's essentially a story you're told in like philosophy class or history class uh, or even like humanities in college, they'll, they'll go over it again. You have this guy who's like chained in, in a chair and he can't move. He can't turn his head and he can't. And then there's this fire and then there's people walking by in front of the fire, creating shadows and the shadows are cast on the wall and the person born and raised inside the chair all he knows is the shadows. That's his reality. He just sees shadows going back and forth, making noises. So to him, the shadows are is what reality is. But then someone comes along when he's like 30 years old, uh, takes him off the chair, reveals to him, takes him out of the cave, and reveals to him that his whole world he knew was not real. And he shows him the light. And it's just, it's the allegory is, I mean, that's that's the Matrix, essentially. It's like your reality, as you know it, is just a mere shadow. And this is the real world. Deep shit. <laughs> but also the trans thing works too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Either one. I think the funny, it's funny too. Like you mentioned, um, was it Cypher? Character yeah. that wanted, when he talks about like, I wish I would have known what the matrix really was. Cause I would have been like, you can take that red pill and shove it up your ass. <laughs> you know, I, I want to be able to just be in a, state of blissful ignorance and not even know and that's just yeah well he's a he's a good example of people in society he like yeah. like me he's a great example of me i don't follow the news right yeah, yeah. <laughs> i'm like i'd rather just be cypher in this situation not not a jerk or mean just yeah. i'd rather not consume large quantities of information right yeah and actually that brings me to a point one fear of mine that, that my mom didn't bring up <laughs> that i have a fear of is that so I'm a, I'm a songwriter, and uh, sometimes I, I have to literally take my phone, turn it off, put it into a drawer, a physical place away from me, uh -huh. close it into another room, and get away from it. With that neural link in your head, and you're constantly getting information from the internet, you're constantly getting notifications, people talk about this, the problem with the iWatch, or the smartwatch from yeah. Apple, the Apple Watch. I don't want to have this thing constantly going off in my head, all these, these notifications and emails. And it's like, Oh my God, stop. Yeah. Like I, information overload. Yes. It made me, it made me think about 
the, the one of the biggest drawbacks of living in the information age is that you have to have an information diet. It's just like the calorie problem problem in civilization. Yeah. It's easy to get get fat because calories come so easily. There's so much sugar and uh, salt and fat and everything. Yeah. Like it's so easy just to gain weight. It's the same thing with information diet. It's so easy just to overload. You can download 17 podcasts, 17 albums, and just just be constantly distracted. And I was thinking, like, that's the big fear of me is, like, a world that's even increasingly distracted and unproductive <laughs> because you're just constantly getting Tinder messages to your brain. Yeah, you can function just fine without knowing hardly any of those things. Like, as long as there's, like, your, the place you're living in is not on fire or, you know, there's not a fire coming your way or there's not like a flood or some natural disaster. And you really don't, I mean, traffic reports, you might need to get those so you know which way to go. I have literally, my parents call me, my parents call me and say, Hey, are you okay? There's a fire near you. I'm like, I didn't even know. <laughs> I'm like, what? You know about a fire that's near me. And I didn't know. Yeah. My mom, she does that here. She's like, what are you going to do about that? That, chop the or whatever i didn't even know about it for the longest time i didn't know about it for the first few days i had no clue and then she, like eric had texted or texted me too and i'm like well they're taking over the city i'm like what are you talking about and i drove by and i'm like oh this is okay whatever i went home your mom's your mom your mom's like morpheus in the matrix yeah, yeah. you're gonna hear a knock boom 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 <laughs> you're like <laughs> you get up from your computer you okay? mom Seattle got rid of all their police officers. Like, what? I just saw one drive by the other day. I, I, I didn't know. But you get what I'm saying, though, right? You get what I'm saying. They're like, you know, in, in, in the Matrix, and Morphe's like, knock, knock. And then the guy's at the door. Your mom's going to be doing that. Yep. Knock, knock. <laughs> <laughs> so you open the door. Cypher. How's my mom know? I've been following CNN. <laughs> I've been keeping up with you on everything. <laughs> Information overload. That's a big time thing. Your mom's like, follow the white rabbit. Right. <laughs> it's going to take you back to Little Rock where you need to be. Oh, man. I don't want to be back in Arkansas. Take the red pill. Take the red pill. Or the blue pill, whatever it was. Oh, speaking of red pill, well, real quick before we end, this is interesting too, this little tidbit on the, the 19 things. It says, the red pill, the involuntary celibate vill villains of the 21st century. Basically, it's saying that the red pill represents feminism. And that you take the red pill and all of a sudden you realize that the world is a cruel fabrication that causes personal unhappiness, social disorder, daily chaos, and global strife. <laughs> so it's like, Ooh. is that really what they're trying to show? Worst of all, it's the reason that you're not having sex. <laughs> like, wait, what? And it happens to be red. And the blue pill is the one where you stay in this blissful state of ignorance where you're doing whatever you want, you know? <laughs> What the, here's my here's my philosophy, and Elon he put it perfectly. The world's always going to have problems. Yeah, we shouldn't strive, not strive, not strive to go to Mars because there's a country that's poor. There's always going to be a poor country. There's always going to be someone who's trying to kill somebody else. There's always going to be someone who's just a jerk. There's always going to be uh, some something going on that sucks yeah. somewhere. It doesn't matter if it's the year 2050 or the year 2350. Yep. Like, so we shouldn't just be like, oh, we can't do anything progressive in terms of advancing the human race because some problem is happening somewhere. Like, that's not how things work. I'm sorry. Like, yep. people who have that argument, we shouldn't spend money on space travel because there's someone who's going hungry. That's, it doesn't work like that. Like, that, that person probably is in a war torn country and there's warlords that are controlling the shipments of food there you know what i mean like that has nothing to do with you know that's like artificial scarcity right you can't fix every problem i mean you just have to focus on the ones that you can yeah to point a finger at musk and like criticize him for wanting to go to mars and build a city there and and yeah. push for those things instead of like give it all to PETA or whatever you know like it doesn't it's you know everybody has a different view of what can help out you know, so to speak, there's always going to be some butthole. It doesn't matter. Yeah. And that's what I came to the realization about the, the neural link. There's always going to be some jerk that's trying to control people, no matter what the technology is available. Yeah, exactly. You know, so like this idea that we shouldn't 
progress humanity because some jerk might get a hold of it. That's a dumb idea. That's just dumb. Yeah. That's like, oh, we shouldn't have electricity because then someone can get electrocuted. It's like, uh, yeah. right. it doesn't make sense. You know, like, oh, we shouldn't have nuclear power because then you can turn it into a bomb. It's like, yeah, but nuclear energy is great. If you really think about it. There's yeah. a nuclear reactor. It sits in the sky. It's, it shows up every day and it powers, yeah. it can power our entire planet. Yeah. Uh, we actually probably wouldn't exist cool. without it. So nuclear power is great. Yeah. You know. We don't want fire because it could burn stuff down. Exactly. That that whole argument of like all of my steaks on fire. Shoot. <laughs> <laughs> it's really dumb. That whole like that uh, yeah. we need to help these people. We can't go to space. Blah blah blah. That that's so dumb. Now I would argue though, we could cut back on our military budget. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and pay for like social programs like UBI or like uh just like fix trying to fix homelessness. I think that that's okay because it's like Really, how needed is it? Really, I mean, I mean, all the testing too, all the you know, uh, all the when they go out and just do, do the testing, like the test runs and stuff. You're they're spending so much money doing that stuff. I remember my brother-in-law. He told me about it. He was shooting a gun on a thing, and he knew actually how much money it cost for like every round. And they were like playing around with the gun, and he's like 100 100 100 100 100 100 like every bullet was a hundred dollars i was like oh my god it was like one of those big anti-aircraft guns i'm like oh yep. my god but you know that happens all the time oh, ching, 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 just blowing money and i remember Jarrett. he was in the army and he told me like you can order like ipads like a hundred ipads using yeah. government money i'm like oh oh my god <laughs> oh my god oh my god <laughs> so much waste desert storm not de or is it desert storm what's the the second one the second gulf war i just remember hearing guys i, I actually agree. iraq <laughs> yeah iraq yeah <laughs> yeah that one <laughs> the second. uh i just remember I was... no you just crack me up because like most people don't call it the second gulf war oh yeah i don't know whatever <laughs> bush's war <laughs> <laughs> they're both bush's war oh crap they were yeah <laughs> bush senior and bush jr yeah little bush but it, i just remember hearing these guys i was applying at a, a police department at the time i was trying to be a police officer crazy <laughs> they were talking about how they were they were both uh military and they were like yeah you know i'm gonna get on at the police department and then i'm probably gonna go uh resign to go back overseas you know back to the the gulf because man they're dropping like you know, fifty, sixty thousand for six months. You know, tax free. You know, that's not. That's actually that's the thing a lot of people overlook. There's we got so many people stationed in like Germany and Japan. Like that's not cheap. You're paying for their living and everything. That's not cheap. Everything. Mm -hmm. I was just thinking like that. Like fifty thousand dollars for six months, tax free. Yeah, you know, times that by how many people are doing that. <laughs> and, and the, the one guy was talking. He's like, yeah. You know, my job was just, I, I sat in a, a, one of the barracks and I just, you know, would check IDs coming in and out. $50,000 for six months of that. Like we could just cut back on the military a little bit. Like just, just like 2%, just 2%, dude. I don't have to cut all of it, just a little bit. <laughs> We're going to have so many rednecks come for us right now. Boo! Get them! <laughs> they like that tranny movie called The Matrix. Get them! Get them! <laughs>